You're listening to Speaking Stella Girl with Terry Tkachuk, an interview series that inspires women to live their most stellar life. Terry is the co-founder of the Stella Girl movement, and she is sitting down with women all over the world to hear about the key moments in their lives and how they live boldly, compassionately, and ultimately became a stellar girl. Welcome to Speaking Stellar Girl. I am your host, Terry Tkachuk, and I'm thrilled today to have Terry Bryant joining me. For over 25 years, Guide Beauty's founder, Terry, worked as a celebrity makeup artist and an educator creating programs for world-renowned prestige makeup brands. But her clients often lamented that learning steps to applying makeup didn't necessarily translate into being able to apply it with confidence. It was difficult to appreciate what she had never experienced herself, that is, until she was diagnosed with Parkinson's, which led to the inception of Guide Beauty and its ingenious tools. I can't wait to hear about your journey. Terry. welcome to Speaking Stellar Girl. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to, to be here and chatting, and this is lovely. This is so fun. I love getting to know amazing women like you. So Aww. let's dive a bit into your background before we get into Guide Beauty and its tools and and the an amazing year that you had and have and, and still going. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, how you got started and, and how you became this amazing celebrity makeup artist and worked in print in New York Fashion Week and, and, um, and various other, you know, PR events and video awards. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I mean, I, like every makeup artist, I started early. I mean, there's not a time I, I can remember not playing with makeup. And I knew, you know, I knew early on, I wanted to be a makeup artist. And, uh, and so, you know, it, even when I was uh, going to school for elementary and special education, I was in Syracuse uh, University and I was working behind the Chanel counter and just, you know, trying at that time, if you want to be a makeup artist, you had to go to New York. Uh, that was like the spot yes. to be. So I was working my way to the city and I started my career and I was very fortunate. I had a lot of support along the way. Um, and early on, I think I realized as I think most makeup artists do that for some reason, makeup artistry came kind of easily to me. You know, it was a skill set I had to expand upon. Um, mm -hmm. And unlike probably any other art form out there, like if you handed me brushes and acrylics, I wouldn't know what to do with it, right? But, yeah. but makeup I could, I could do. But when people sit in my chair, you always hear the same thing. I wish I could do this for myself. This isn't easy for me. Uh, can I take you home with me? Yes. <laughs> You're like, oh, wait a minute. This isn't as easy for everybody. I think I want to teach people. So I started running parallel paths. So for like 25 years, my career has been makeup artistry and education, developing artistry and education programs for companies like Smashbox and Josie Marin and, and Dior and Dior. Stila. Um, and I loved it. And at the same time, working on set, doing print and editorial. And, and um, it was going brilliantly. And I, and I loved it. And, uh, you know, the goal and the passion was always to whoever was in the chair, whether it was celebrity or, or my mom, right? Uh, let's show you how to do this. So you feel great today, but you can go home, do it for yourself and feel great every day. Uh, and, and I thought I would do it forever. About uh, 11 years ago, okay. I was on set and I was working with a model I've worked with numerous times. The look was super easy, fresh, clean, pretty. I yes. uh, should have took it out in like 20 minutes and like 45 minutes in. I just wasn't happening. It was very strange. And I used to always say, like, I could look at your face right. and I knew exactly how I wanted to celebrate your features. And like my arm and my hand were just this very direct extension of my mind's eye. And I could just make it happen. And on that day, there was just this little disconnect and I couldn't get, I knew what I wanted to do, but my hand just wouldn't do it. And it was strange and it was weird. Scary. And I thought it's a little scary. And uh, I got through the day and said, well, hmm, that was scary. Let's ignore it. <laughs> let's, let's pretend that didn't happen. And then those moments started to creep up more and more. Um, and I started going to doctors and they were like, well, you're getting older and you probably don't drink enough water. And are you taking your vitamins and all sorts? And I thought, all right, well, probably not doing any of that. We'll go with that. And I, I ignored it for many years somewhat because people were not giving me a real answer other than you're getting older and you don't take good enough care of yourself. You're but not intuitively, intuitively, you knew something, something was, was off. Was yeah. Off. yeah. But also because I was, my career was the parallel paths, right? I was doing the makeup artistry on set and I was developing the education programs. And so, so I found myself kind of unknowingly pivoting my career okay. and I was moving away from on set 
and doing more of the um, education piece. So if you called me for fashion week, I'd say no, because I knew for some reason I couldn't handle it. But if you called me for a one day shoot, one model, a lot of hours, easy look, I might say yes to that. Okay. Until about six years ago, where I, I, I might be jumping ahead, sorry to the question. No, but that's okay. About six years ago, that sort of di- disconnect I was finding in my hand that was, uh, wasn't was allowing me to work on set as an artist the way I always had been able to do was starting to affect the ability to do my own makeup. And at that point, I was like, all right, well, this is like, this something's is crazy. Going this is, something's going on. It's not the not enough water. And see, I'm getting older, but so are all my other friends who are makeup artists and they don't seem to be having <laughs> this yes. same problem. Fortunately, uh, I got in front of the right people and, and was able to eventually get to the place where, uh, you know, a medical professional was able to tell me what was going on. And that was that I had Parkinson's. And Parkinson's, you know, I'm, I'm a left-handed makeup artist. Okay. And that is the side predominantly that it was affecting and causing that disconnect. And I kind of always say that, like, the day I got that diagnosis was kind of the day that Guide Beauty was born, right? Like, yes. I, and I can share sort of how that all happened, but that is kind of the beginning because it was an entire shift in my perspective and understanding what it, what it means to be a natural makeup artist, what it means to have a disconnect and all of a sudden realize that there's a reason people have been left out of the world that I've loved so much for so many years. Mm -hmm. And maybe I could look at things differently and make something beautiful out of a moment that obviously isn't the best news in the world, but you know, if you wait long enough, that's generally the case, right? Out of the, out of what is seemingly the worst, if you just give it a beat, something beautiful can be born. And for me, that is, that is guide beauty. And that is, that is, that is an amazing story. And how are you feeling now? I feel great. I feel great. You know, it's, uh, I am fortunate that, uh, you know, Parkinson's presents differently for everybody. Okay. Uh, the progression can go quicker or slower. Um, you know, I think people think of uh, the most common, I think, sort of symptom that people or, or um, uh, people recognize is the shaky, shakiness, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, and I have some of that, uh, but it's moving, it's progressing slowly. I have great doctors. Um, and so, you know, you just go with it. Every day is yeah. different. Some days are easier than others. Um, and you just, you know, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow, but, you know, I, I knock on wood, uh, I've been, yeah, doing just great. Doing Blessed just and great. grateful. And, and yeah. yes. And so guide beauty was born after, after this diagnosis and yes. a- amazing products. Um, you were, oh, yeah. you launched a uh, February 25th of 2020. So three weeks, pretty much before, you know, the world shut down, you've been featured in Allure in style, every, you know, publication, print publication, I, you know, I could list them all raving reviews. Um, you know, it's, it's grown into this, you know, a very user-friendly, like these products. I mean, I've seen the YouTubes and the, and the in, uh, IGTVs on, on uh, Guide Beauty's Instagram about how to apply and, and what you do. And it seems like, it's like a miracle to be able to apply that cat eye in like two little glides. Yes. Yeah. Like a it, glide it, and slide. A glide and slide. I love the, the glide and slide. Yeah, you know, and that was the whole goal, right? Like, you know, I, I, my whole, you know, my, my career was built on this passion of I love makeup. It's this industry, this world, what makeup is meant to be has been so important. And I wanted to teach people uh, and to now be able to do it in this way. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's really exciting because, you know, when we started, you know, and I talk about how I got my diagnosis Right. And I always tell the story. I was in my in the doctor's office, and my father was with me. He's a retired physician. They gave me the the diagnosis, and and afterwards, my my dad said, you know, honey, you kind of look like you blinked out there for a minute. Are you okay? Where did your mind go? And you know, I'm sure it went in a million one places, right? But right. one of the things that first popped in is, you know, how am I going to do my makeup if this is going to progress as one would expect? I don't want to lose that, right? Like you can think about all the things you can do. I could get my hair blown out once a week. Okay, got that covered. I can get a caftan and a cocktail ring. It's an easy outfit. It's pretty fabulous. Like that's not so hard to put on. Like that'll be my look. Like you kind of go through the motions. Right. But make up a daily moment. And I, but the good news was, you know, for, it's been years that I had been slowly losing this very important part of my life and not knowing really, not understanding or knowing why. Now at least I knew why. So I ran home thinking, well, I'm a makeup artist. I know the mechanics of artistry. So mm-hmm. I started like pulling apart every sort of 
beauty product I had. I got tools bench. I actually got like, you know, uh, uh, wrenches and pliers and all my makeup. It was like, and, and make, apart, and it's like a, a do and do it yourself yeah. that turned into this, all these That's wands right. and brushes and, yeah. and how's your but patent you, coming? Is it? Oh, is it yes. Yeah. We've got, a, we got a bunch of them. We got, <laughs> oh, cause, okay. So it's not pending anymore. It's done. We have uh, some are pending. So there's, there's utility and there's design. And so some are still pending and some are, are, are done and final, but yeah, all, all, all in, all in the works. Um, but you know, that it was, uh, it, you know, it was initially my own sort of moment, but we actually, the cool thing is, and I think how we got to the tools we have today and the reason that it's just that slide and glide and that easy moment is that um, the, the real sort of pivotal moment in designing the products is that we join forces with a design team that specializes in human factors engineering. Okay. And they introduced me to something called universal design, which to me is like the most, like now knowing what universal design is, I, I, I just think it's like a new lens to not just be the beauty industry, but the world. Cause really at the very base of universal design. So the core understanding of it is if you factor in for those who have a greater need, you will create, ultimately create a better product or process for the whole. So it's really, it, it's this design process where, you know, it was three years and I know you know what it's like to, yes. right, have a development Long moment. You, you are, you are you know, well-versed in, uh, in development. Um, it takes a long time. It took over 200 test users. It took over a hundred iterations of the guide one. But what you do is you ask everybody to come to the table, professional makeup artists, newbies to makeup. The average makeup user is pretty good. The person who says, I'm great, but I don't have a lot of time. People have Parkinson's, MS, arthritis. You just have everybody play and you watch to see where the sticking points are so that you can start to design them into the tools to make one That's universally incredible. tool that is you know, easier for the widest, broadest audience possible, right? So that was the goal and that's how we got there. So you know, certainly it, it, uh, it's interesting because I spent so many years sort of understanding in product development how to like, you know, sort of think about what I might want to do and like look for a stock component and how can I make it prettier, but I never realized I could actually pull it apart and redesign it to make it easier in a, in a way that, you know, I just didn't even know was needed until I had my own struggles, right? Until my right. own hands started saying, nope, we're not going to do that anymore. Right. And all of a sudden it was very eye-opening. As much as I would love to say, I helped people along the way in my career in education. And hopefully I did. You did. There's still like, if you think about eyeliner, right? Like, you know, the joke is no makeup artist ever has said, I'll be there in two seconds. I'm going to toss on this winged eyeliner. That's a hard technique, it right? Is. Like yes. we'll get there. And it's actually harder for even makeup artists will tell you, it's easier for us to do it on somebody else than ourselves because you lose something once you're in the mirror. So those are hard. And then if you're not good at makeup artistry, then that's just an overwhelming moment. And a lot of people don't even bother to try because it's overwhelming. It's like, I, I can't do this, right? Like I'm just right. going to give up before I even start. So when you start factoring for all those people and we can realize that that one tool could help the person who never thought they could to the person who already could, but is looking for something easier. That to me is like just a beautiful way to approach design, whether it's makeup or, you know, kitchen tools or, you know, the remote control of the television, which actually is a universally designed uh, product itself. Yes, um, it is. So, yeah. it's, uh, yeah. so it's just a whole new universe. And so, yeah, at the end of the day, it, this whole, this whole, through it all, it's like, I've been allowed to see things in a way I never could have. So my, I think my career has just sort of expanded in a way that I'm grateful for, uh, that is. even with the Parkinson's, who knew? Yeah, exactly. Who knew? Let's, I mean, we all love to make our lives easier, right? Yeah. So, you know, you, you know, your brand, your brand shining star, which is the, the guideline. Okay. Yeah. So like, let's talk to me about its design because, sure. you know, that makes our life easier all yeah, of our lives yeah. easier. So show me. So here is the wand. You can see that. Yes. And if you think of traditional tools, most of the traditional tools we use in makeup, uh, especially think of pencils, brushes, they're long, thin cylinders that ask you to come in and grip and come in this is horizontally, sort of freehand. And now you're coming in with a very tight, so let's say it's a pencil, it's a sharp object. You got to come in freehand and draw a very tight line across and, and, and controlled line across your lash line and get it balanced. And then you have to repeat it on the other eye and make them look right as yeah. even as possible. And if you're one-handed, like you said, you're dominantly left. If, right. I mean, like, how do you do the other eye with the wingtip? Yeah. 
Yeah, not easy. Not easy. And you get guide. That's how you get guide beauty. You get guide. <laughs> you get you get guide you beauty. Get guide. That's how. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think you know when we started the design phase. I think one of the, the it was very clear early on. I think it sort of you come. It's somewhat intuitive. Like you you you'll recognize the moment I say it, but. You know, the two greatest human factors that you realize very quickly that you could leverage and help people with are grip and stability. Okay. So if you have to grip, there's like a golfing, oh, like if you ever watch people golf or, or yes, get to I the lo- golf. I love golf. Do you love, okay. So oh. they always, what they always tell you that loosen up your grip, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you don't want to, you don't want too tight of a grip because you lose a certain amount of like that fluidity in your swing, right? You want that nice fluid stroke, right? I'm not a golfer, but so I might be using the wrong language but no you, you know, you're just, yeah right yeah, so yeah. it's the same thing with when you're doing your makeup when you're painting if you are tight here you locked up and tight all the way up so you never get this like when you watch makeup artists and they just are, are doing or any kind of artist they just always look so light in their touch right right they're not locked up but when you're uncomfortable get lock in so we were like all right let's let's unlock the hand right okay so instead of doing this or you know this and coming in let's just lightly put it into the palm and the only place you need any kind of control is here right with this little notch where you put your finger okay now the other thing is stability if i'm coming in free-handed and i have to draw a line now my hand's going to shake whether you have you know obviously my hand on depending on the day will shake more or less but not even surgeons aren't don't have surgeon steady precision hands right so you've got to get your hand to steady so you know, the moment you touch your, I think if you think about a pencil, pencils are uh, out of traditional eyeliner tools, pencils tend to be the easiest to use, but the moment you touch your eye with a pencil, you dull the tip. Okay. So you lose the precision, which is why people like liquid liner, because you never lose the precision. The challenge is liquid liner is harder to do, right? So what we did is we created this soft, flexible, bendy mm-hmm. applicator tip. Mm-hmm. with a little there's a little hole there right this window so you have added visibility so even if your eyes are mostly closed you know people still are looking through you can see what you're doing you're not blocking up skewing your vision this applicator tip which is saw is curved to meet where your lashes and your lid connect okay which is where you apply and it never loses its precision edge so you can always you don't have to worry about sharpening and then you're just gonna glide across this cream formula with the applicator tip, right? And then what you do is you can rely first, instead of the, instead of having to start applying the moment you touch your eye, you can first find your footing by grounding, right? And steadying your hand. So you can ground and steady your hand by yeah. dropping it against your cheek and then tilt. And I can't see what I'm doing because I don't have my glasses. I'm looking, <laughs> looking into the camera. Uh, into the phone, yeah. Out. But I have certainly have to pull a mirror out and show you. And then you just tilt, find where your lashes and your lid meet and you just start working across your lash line and it Amazing. gives you all the control whether you're doing the water line and i'm actually kind of doing this you I are have no vision. but you're so, doing well and for I those of no- you listening on apple and spotify stop and come to youtube because this is awesome we got to see this yeah it's so it's, it's it's your there's so many reasons why it's helpful it's helpful because you are coming in vertically instead of horizontally you're right at the right the angle right at the right angle. So you're coming in. Yeah, exactly. You're tilting. The tip is designed to meet where the lashes and lid are. It's curved to fall into that little divot. Yeah. Right. If you look, in, if you look into your lash face, you'll see that divot so you can get more control, thicker or thinner. It's designed to work under. If you want to do the waterline, you can do top and bottom. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to clean. And it's just, even for people who like, you know, there's some pro artists who will actually hold down here. Yeah. So it's designed so you can actually adjust the way you need to. Some people have uh, lash extensions. They may still come in a little bit more this this sort of adjust their hand, but whichever way you go, you're always getting more control and you're getting because of the grip and the stability that's sort of built into the tool itself. I love this. I cannot wait. Yay. So you have more than just that product though. You've got another. Yeah. So tell me about the rest of (laughs) it. Okay. So I, you know, Obviously, I want I want a full guide face. Like the dream is full guide face, right? right. <laughs> that, yes, and we you, and you will get there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we're working on it, but I knew I wanted to start with the eye area first, right? Like that is the, there are certain things. One because certain features, um, you know, mascara, eyeliner, brows. When you define those features, they're sort of the most natural way to sort of create the most emphasis, to create the greatest impact um, without having to do 
as many steps. However, they also tend to be the most challenging, right? So just like eyeliner, brows are a challenge for people. Right. Usually things that, again, more precision, you have to be a little bit more controlled and now you have to do it twice. Twice, yeah, I have to do it on both right. sides. Do it on both sides. And then mascara, especially if your hands are a little shaky. I mean, I even before my Parkin, onset of Parkinson's, can't tell you how many times I poke myself in the eye with my, with my mascara. I know mascara it's, so, it's so hard to do on other people too. I don't know how yeah. you guys do it. So, and very often what we do is we take that disposable applicator, we, we, we coat it and then we hand it to the client. It's the one product you very often hand to your client and say, here, put your mascara on. Right. right? Because it's uncomfortable for the makeup artist and it's uncomfortable for the client. To yeah. See that so get it all in there. Yep. Right. Or we'll just grab tight on the top lid. Right. But um, so with the mascara and the brow, we'll start with mascara. The mascara is it. So all the formulas are vegan, cruelty-free, yes. non-toxic. Um, very important is a tubing formula, which I love because I love, you know, I need something that's not going to transfer, but I don't want to wear waterproof every day. It's so too drying. Tubing, it's too drying. It can damage and make those lashes brittle. And so this way we could condition and treat lashes well and have the wear of, of a waterproof without damaging the lashes. And then it's so gratifying because the tubing formula, which is warm water at the end of the day, you just slide those little tubes off your lashes. Yes. They literally wrap 360. But the app, even just to the, if you look at things like the, the uh, wand itself, mm -hmm. we call this a slimline brush. Thinking universally, some people have bigger eyes, some people have smaller eyes. If it's a jumbo brush, how do I get to the very base of the lashes? Right. I can't, right? And if you don't get to the base of the lashes, you weigh your lashes down. So I knew that had to be a moment as well. And then the grip, again, grip and stability, free up the hand. I no longer have to do this. I'm just gonna take this ring. And I, it's a, it literally, I, I, I'm obsessed with rings. So I love that we designed a ring. Love it. And you just, whichever fingers, you know, I generally use the first two fingers, my, okay. you know, uh, and just slide between. Okay. And then now you if you it. have more control, you can just put your hand on a thumb rest and apply. Yeah. But for me today, actually my hand's in pretty good shape, but when my hand is shaky, I can, now my hand is free. I can rest ground and steady my hand so I can get right into that lash face and I can achieve, I can get my lashes coated and I have control. So even when my hands are super shaky, I don't have the fear of poking myself in the eye because I have the control that I wouldn't have if I had to go and have that grip. If I just didn't have, it's just that, that ring, that little added bit of stability makes such a difference in having control, right? That's amazing. Um, so that is that, so awesome. Thank you. That is and so then, exciting. You mentioned that you worked because we talk we, at Stella Girl, we always talk about like how we support and celebrate other women. And you mentioned that you worked with Stila and I, uh, Janine Lobo was on, on the show. Um, I know the you goddess. Me, she's my, I, I am obsessed to me, this day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh. And it was so funny. She popped on and her hair was blonde and I'm like, because uh, of her, all of her headshots are all of with her dark hair and she's yeah. got this beautiful platinum bluey blonde hair. It was just amazing. So we talk about like how we support and celebrate and champion other women with stellar girl. And so you worked with Janine and all these amazing, amazing women, um, in your career. So how can we better champion each other these days? You know, I, I think it's the awareness It's what you're, it's, for example, it's what you're doing. It's caring. It's, I think part of it is taking a step back because it's hard, right? Like it's hard not to get caught up in your own life, your own day, your own world. And we deserve, we deserve to do that. We deserve to sort of, and, it, and you know, life happens, it can be challenging and it's okay to sometimes just say, today's going to be all about me, right? But then step outside of yourself yes. and look around and recognize that there's people with life experiences that are different than yours, that they're having their own moment and, and look around, reach out, talk to people listen to podcasts and webinars and realize that there's a whole world and see how you can help and benefit like Brett. And, and so that you, you know, I think once you expand your awareness, you're more able to expand your, you know, your ability to support and champion one another. Right. I think it's just, it's hard to know how to, it's hard to know that you should be doing something for somebody else. If you don't even realize first that, that somebody else might need your help. Yes. Very well said. Very well said. That's amazing. That's a total stellar girl mindset. Absolutely. And we have fun. I've had the yeah. best half hour. Oh, like, yay, me too. <laughs> it's been so fun. Cause you know, I love these conversations. I got to learn so much about you. So last question before we sign yeah. off, sure. um, what brings Terry Bryant joy? Oh, Oh, I love that question. <sighs> There's so much that brings me joy. Um, 
God, I, I, you know, I have to say it, but what I'm doing now, guide, guide beauty brings me joy. What I'm doing now, there's nothing better after all this. Cause you know, as you know, there are some days where like, Oh, hi, I'm tired and mm-hmm. I'm going to make it through. But then you get a call, then you get an email, then you get a DM and somebody yes. says, I, I'm so excited. I am able to do something I never thought I could, or you gave me back something I had lost. And this means something to me. I'm, I, you've given me the ability to own something for myself that I, I thought I couldn't do anymore. And though the moment somebody takes the time to do that, I'm so recharged. Like, it, you know, yes. there's that, like, I get the happy cry. Yes. And then I'm like, never stopping because there's nothing that feels better than knowing that, you know, just even if it's just brighten somebody's day a little bit, yes. that's it. That's everything. You, you inspired one person that one day you, ins- you know, yeah. that, that is just, I, I, um, and that is, that is what, you know, our world needs more of is these fun, happy, joyous moments yeah. that we can talk about and, you know, not always talking about, you know, our doom or our gloom, but yes, we all have it. We all have it. The world has it. We have it. But the yeah. moments that bring us joy, then we have fun where we can celebrate each other and, and really champion each other and, and what other people's, there's no, there's no, every, there's not any competition. There's a room for everyone to succeed. And I love your success story. I love your journey and your story. And thank you so much for sharing it with all of us today at Speaking Stellar Girl. I really, really appreciate you. And, and I cannot wait to get my hands on this glide and slide product because it's going to make my life easier. Uh, I can't wait for you to try it. I, I just have to say really quickly, thank you because your energy is so beautiful. And this, this like, at, just listening to you, I'm like, this is actually the moment. You want to know how we make a difference. It's contagious. This positivity, this energy is contagious. It makes me want to lift my day up a little bit and, and pass it on. So, um, so thank you for having me. I really, oh, truly, I love this that. Really truly. Well, I will see you on the other side. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of new episodes. To learn more about the Stellar Girl movement, please visit us at StellarGirl.com.